Hello survivors and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be taking a first look at Walker Hordes which is a new game type that's coming to the game with update 19.0. It's going to be another tournament just like raid tournaments, just like level up tournaments, just like SR tournaments but it does look like this is going to be more of a solo tournament with faction elements that also only seems to work in leagues. So we'll go through the landing screen. As you can see on the left hand side, it just says Walker Hordes, basically just how it does with other tournaments like Raid and so on. We'll click that and we'll basically have a quick look. As you can see first, you can see in my league, I have 5,605 people in Gold League. And that's because a lot of people have been put into the same leagues purposefully because there are league restrictions on what you can use in terms of your defense teams. And that's what we're gonna show you as well. So this is the landing screen and maybe a little bit too much to take in at first, but we'll just go through it bit by bit as you can see the player rank would be my player rank within the league it doesn't look like this is going to be regional based and it does look like it's going to be fully leagues based at least that's how it is in beta it might be different once it goes live kind of like onslaught but for solo horde points is my point so effectively that's the same as raid points level up points and obviously whoever has the highest horde points is going to become first now the card packs is obviously how I'm going to be able to get my walker card. Defenses is you setting up your defense and obviously attack is you setting up your attacks. So first up we're going to look at the card section. So if I click on card packs you can see that there are multiple different packs we can get. There are three claimable right now and there are six different possibilities at least from the start. It does look like this one is called a starter pack so it will be the one that we get at the beginning of every tournament and the rest will be for instance the rest of the time we can claim them they refresh based on time and basically on performance for instance the faction pack is based on how well your faction does as it says this pack can be opened when a certain amount of horde points are collected by all faction members when all faction members have collected 25,000 total your faction will get a pack to open so if you're in an active faction you'll be getting free packs quite consistently if you're in a less active faction you'll be getting these packs less consistently it doesn't say the odds of the packs in this one but for all the other ones it does it's it's from uncommon to legendary cards in this pack it doesn't go up that high but it is uncommon to legendary there is one card guaranteed to be rare in this pack for instance in the next pack there is one card guaranteed to be ultra rare and it goes up to epic and then in platinum there is one card guaranteed to be ultra rare again and it goes up to legendary and again in diamond same sort of deal it goes up to legendary just with slightly better odds now when you open these packs you will receive cards of walkers debuffs we'll go through it when i open them but once the tournament is over all of those cards are removed and then you start the process again once the next tournament starts up so we're going to open up these cards and i'm not really sure what we can get in this first one there's no odds displayed so it could just be random i'm not sure how many cards we even get so let's just open it oh my god what are we gonna get i've got no idea how many cards that is one two three four five six seven eight i'm not sure if that's how many cards we're actually gonna get okay we're gonna get a lot more so we get some ultra rares we get some ultra rares doesn't look like it goes much higher than ultra rare it does look like ultra rare is the highest i'm not sure what the guaranteed one was but maybe this is maybe this could be scripted for beta i'm not sure in terms of giving us a certain amount of cards but we've got a few walkers and some debuffing cards and some you know buffing cards for our characters so we're going to claim these and then we're going to claim these side packs these ones i think we get less i think we get three we get three okay hopefully we get some rares okay that's the best we could get i think i think we actually could get ultra rare in here a 20 percent chance um but we get some rare cards and i think the higher dog tag cost basically says how good they are um obviously each card has a different ability and as you can see already in four hours i can claim another one for free so or i can skip that and buy some more like now um we'll, we won't do that just yet um, i'm gonna click the next one Let's see if we can get some better ones this time. Yeah, we get an epic card. Okay, we get a lure walker. And as you can see, it says special ability. Each turn while this walker is active, one extra walker enters the field if there is a free space for them to be placed. So basically, that's pretty cool if you set up your team in a way that that will work. Um, we get a Roma as well. Extremely cheap walker to be used in larger quantities. When attacking, a great chance to cause 200 bleed damage to the attacker for two turns. It also gives you some sort of stats as well. And... <laughs> 
I love the role, fodder. Is it the same role as this one? Okay, it's actually support, okay. Um, so we have move speed of four, so that means obviously it can move four spaces. You do see the stats as well in terms of attack, defense, and so on. Walkers in general have very low HP and defense and very high attack, but that isn't really that high attack, I'm gonna be honest. So that is a bit better in terms of attack, but they have no rushes, so it's just gonna be basic attacks and that's gonna be massively reduced based on characters' defenses. So that's how you claim cards. And as you can see the difference in time, it takes six hours for this card to refresh. It takes uh, four hours for this pack to refresh. It'll probably, just on a guess, eight hours, 10 hours. That's just a guess. So if you're in Platinum, you'll be able to open all of these cards progressively like every so often in terms of every four hours, six hours, guessing eight hours, guessing 10 hours. And then once your faction obviously hits the 100%, you can open this every time. And it, if you're in Platinum, you can't open Diamond. If you're in Gold, you can't open these two. Like right now, I can't open these two, they're locked. And it, as you can see down the bottom, it says three out of five. So every five car packs I open, I get a free car pack open as well. I'm not sure what the odds are on this. Oh, it's a guarantee, it's just one card and it's a guaranteed ultra rare. Okay, that's good to know. And then it says the duplicate conversions. If you get a duplicate legendary card, you get 330 of these markers. If you get an epic, 185, ultra rare 30, rare 20, uncommon 10. That's cool to know. So what, what I'll do is I'll buy another one and we'll get three more cards. And hopefully we get another decent card. We get an ultra rare shroud. Shroud. Okay. Um, when used, one walker gets hidden for one turn. Cannot be attacked except by fighters with focus. Okay then. Um, and then we get an uncommon and a rare. So we're going to claim everything. And we'll go through these once we start to set up our attack. But we're going to edit our defense first. So this is my defense team. And as you can see, I can select fighters, turrets, and I can also select terrain. Now I can only put down two turrets and two terrain and obviously my five fighters and the slots are already allocated so I can remove the ones I've already got and right now I've got nothing allocated. The characters are obviously there but no terrain, no turrets are, are currently alloc allocated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my defense team first and as you can see the top three characters are the three middle characters and the bottom two characters are the end characters. Now if I wanted to set up a good defense team I'd obviously have, oh, I didn't see that terrain. I'd obviously have my terrain at the bottom two and then no terrain at the top. And so the bottom three characters are a bit more sort of covered. The terrain ranges from things to slow walkers down and things to blow them up with claymores. If you click the I in the top right hand corner, you can see the information on every single one. There is also one that makes hidden characters visible and that is quite powerful because there obviously are some stealth sort of elements to this for attack teams. So we're going to just set up the defense team first, like I said. And like I said before, it was the two end characters who are... Um, oh, we've got two Ezekiels here. Or oh, the five star. We've got a five star Ezekiel and Darnell. So the five star Ezekiel and Darnell are the second two. So it's the first character and the, and the fourth and the fifth are the three middle characters. And Darnell... Let me just check this again. Okay, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, and we can swap them around like that. Let me just, oh, that's actually pretty good. If you can just swap them around, that makes it easier. It doesn't matter what character, what order you put them in on. So I'm gonna quickly just select some characters and we'll continue. So this is the team I put together. I don't have anything spectacular, I'm gonna be honest. And this is the limit of my weapons as well on beta. It's pretty terrible. But it is good that they gave us some characters because I didn't have anyone close to being maxed out, if I'm honest. So I'm just gonna set my defense team. And as I said before, you can just swap these around if you want to have characters in certain positions. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Eric in probably one of the most defensible positions, which I think is gonna be the middle, because I think they have to destroy the turrets before they can kill him. And then I'm going to have six star um, Nox there. And I'll have my command. I'll have my, I think I'll leave it as it is. I think I'll leave it as it is. I like that. That looks good to me. Basically, my, my weak characters can be at the top, but hopefully they'll be just keep on getting revived. So now I'm going to choose my turrets. And there are a bunch of turrets. I'm not going to go through them all, but there are a bunch of turrets. But basically, some of them do damage. Some of them buff your characters. Give all teammates 25 crit, for instance. Obviously, a crit is an instant kill on a walker, although walkers do have crit resists. A command center has a better chance each turn to stun two random walkers for one turn. You know, there's a lot of different things that happen here. Some of them give focus, some of them give um, AP 
each turn some of them give a lot of different things as you can see while on the field all teammates get focus and 10 percent attack there's loads of different buffs you just have to decide which one combos are the best i'm going to go for aggressive ones at the moment just because it doesn't matter too much i'm going to go for a sniper turret and a mounted machine gun and the mounted machine gun deals three attacks against the lowest hp enemy in any row each turn that's cool and the sniper turret does deal 100 percent damage to the highest hp walker in any row each turn there we go so it'll just do a bit of damage nothing spectacular just a bit of damage i don't think damage ones are the way to go personally but that's the way we're going to go for it and then the terrain i want to defend my bottom characters you know these three down the bottom because they're the most important characters for me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have um, rocky terrain on one side and on the other side i'll have claymores so basically i won't have stealth characters walk over the rocky terrain towards those characters and if they go the other side they'll get blown up by the the claymores now they will be able to go up the top and make their way down but it will take them a little bit more time and that's the hope anyway so we'll click save and as it says your walker horse defense team has been saved so that's our defense done so we'll check out the attack screen now and basically with all the cards that we pulled before we can set select the cards that we want to take on attack team i'm not going to try too hard in this one i'm just going to basically take the ones i've got the most of i don't think i can actually hit 100 which is the maximum amount of dog tags rating you can get each card has a dog tag rating in the top left hand corner as you can see and i'll basically take the cards i've got the most of first um just to basically try and get as many cards as possible and i'll try and go for the better ones too and we'll go for some debuffs and buff cards as well i don't think i'm not going to be able to get everything so um, i'm going to go with this and i'm going to go with the health boost and what's this one one walker and all adjacent to it recover from all negative effects we'll remove that for the moment um, i'll put in another walker who should we go with does 50 percent extra damage to all turrets deals two extra damage to all terrain okay all fighters get minus 10 percent attack when attacked, a great chance to reflect 80% of incoming damage. That should be, could be pretty decent. Immune to stun, attack down. I'll go with the reflect. You know, could get lucky. So there's my team. I don't think I've got any spectacular characters except this one in the top right-hand corner because he can just bring other characters in. We're just going to set up our attack and just test out an attack. You can view the defense of the team you're coming up against. And as you can see, it's just some, I think it's just some three stars on four stars. So I should melt this team pretty easily just because I've got a lot of characters that I'm going to be putting on. So when you attack, as you can see, this is their defense setup. There's five rows, as you can see. The top three rows on the right-hand side, have, they've put up their defenses there. And the bottom three rows on the left-hand side, they put their defenses up there. So if I was to attack these rows, I'm not going to hit those traps. It can be sometimes beneficial to hit those traps to try and clear them a little bit. But I'm just going to leave it like this for the moment and just click go. These these ones that I put on the field are, fo are classified as fodder because they're the most basic card. And basically they're to, to drain attacks off the, the enemy while your better cards come in from behind. So then I can follow these cards up with actually good cards. Like this card is an AP down, I believe. When attacking, remove 25 AP from the target. So it's an AP down on attack. So we want that character to get closer to them without being hurt. I'm just going to wreck them anyway. Now these characters aren't leveled up and they are three stars. So it's going to be pretty easy. When you're coming up against six stars, it's a very, very different story. We'll just finish this so you can see what it's like at the end. Flawless victory. So I get 1,440 points from getting a flawless victory. Kind of how it works in raids. It pops up at the end. And it does look like the solo trophies are times 1.8 and the faction trophies are times 1.8 as well. But I think, I'm fairly certain this is going to be changed. This is probably just in beta for a moment. But we'll have to find out, I guess. We'll find out once it goes live. So then once I kick next, I can just keep attacking, keep attacking, keep attacking. Now, obviously, you get six energy in the top left-hand corner. And then energy seems to work exactly like rates. In that you get six energy and it's 45 minutes per energy cooldown. Not sure if it actually says it doesn't so it's exactly like raid tournaments now one thing that's great about this mode which i think is awesome is when you click, click edit defense you can test your own defense so if we click on test defense we can test an attack against our own defense but not only that you can actually test it with all the cards available to you in your league and as you can see all these cards are not ones i've, I've opened but it gives you a good idea on how to basically build teams 
and just test things out. I should pretty much walk over that defense team because it's got no weapons. But once you obviously this goes live, you'll be able to build your own defense teams and then you'll be able to test it out. See how effective it is against the best cards available in your league, which is actually pretty cool. I think that's an absolutely amazing thing. Hopefully they add that to raids where you can attack your own defense team. That would actually be pretty useful as well. So I'll quickly create a team to come up against my defense team. It won't be anything spectacular again. It will just be a quick click around. Okay, so this is the attack team I've created. It isn't going to be walker heavy. You can stack lots of walkers if you really want to overwhelm the, the opponent this is going to be quite limited and it's going to be basically trying to win early and then finish things off with my ap down characters well that's how we're going to roll that's how we're going to roll so i'm going to click attack and this is how my defense team set up if we remember i put eric in the middle and i put these other two characters down the bottom so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start at the top and i'm going to attack the top characters first and let's see if we can get the right things in and I'm going to make them both stealth for one turn. So they're not going to be attackable. And I'm also going to make it so that they decapitate enemies when they kill somebody. Now they, they are going to be attacked on this turn. But I'm going to still do this. And this is going to do defense down to these. And then I'm going to start bringing in other characters. And I'm going to do defense down to this. I think I already did that. Yeah. So there we go. We decapitated two. That's pretty nice. And we'll destroy the other turrets. And we'll bring HP into it now. What does this do? Okay, that's that's not needed. We'll bring in some more walkers. Okay, the stun the stun walkers are doing the job. And they should just slowly start making their way down. That's the plan. Let's get this in. Obviously, there are no mods on my characters. I think that's it, basically. See, so they walked over one of the... Um, they walked... Oh, nice. They walked over one of the landmines and got instantly killed. It did 10,000 damage. It doesn't say what damage it does, but it did 10,000 damage. So, basically, it's a one-shot kill on any walker that walks over it. I should win this. Yeah, the stun walker. Every time the stun walker attacks somebody, the first attack this walker makes against the target will stun the target for two turns. Very, very strong. Obviously, stun resist is going to be quite important there. And actually, this should be a win. This should be a win. Lovely jubbly. And we are going to decapitate that as well. So it wasn't too bad in the end. Um, I didn't take a very heavy walker team. We'll try out a different team with just lots of walkers this time. Okay, so this time we're taking a lot of walkers or walkers that make lots of walkers happen. Like this boom, this boom guy just here. Um, boom box. Basically, every time he's on the field, every it's like if I have three on, he spawns three walkers like these three walkers this one is a defensive walker which basically makes it so that everyone on his row will be more defensive so i can put him in late and he can basically defend the people ahead of him it's i don't think this is going to be as effective as that last one was but we'll see we'll have a little test out and basically i'm going to overload it at the beginning to just try and get as many on the fields and we're going to destroy one of the turrets. We'll destroy the one behind the claymore. And we'll leave it at that. Let's go. I think they're going to get killed. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. So we're going to put a couple of lures on. And I'm not sure if the row is across the entire row. Like if it goes all the way across from left to right. Or if it's just the side that they're on. There we go. Look at the spawn came in. That's lovely. That's lovely. Okay, we're going to spawn in another one and we're going to get in some and you can see that the rushes now as you can see the gold bars is 60 out 68 out of 68 it's not actually glowing gold so that's a bit of a it's a bit of a shame so i'm going to impair that one and now i'm going to do defense down on these characters who else do i need to impair um i need to do boom box here shiva's gonna rush Will I kill her? I th I'm going to risk it. I'm going to say I'm going to kill her. I need to impair Eric just to make sure. Okay, we do kill her. I've got no um, decapitate. So this is where things could be a problem. Yes. Okay, we've done it. We we've just got to kill Eric, basically. This is a bit of a... This is a more horde-like tactic. As you can see, it's just... 
rest in pepperonis. <laughs> so many walkers. So there are different tactics. As you see, the first one I did quite limited walkers. This one I tried to overload them with as many walkers as possible. There are very different strategies. Within Legendary, there are obviously cards that are much nicer as well. There's a card that's called the Whisperer. And basically, it is stealth constantly for the first two turns by itself. And it does a lot of damage as well. So if you get one of those cards or two of those cards, you can just put it on the field by itself. And it can instantly just attack people. Like, it can run to them, attack them without any problem. And I, I don't think it has Decapitate, but you only need to put the Decapitate card on it, which is this one, as you can see. Blade Detachments, when used, one walker, and all adjacent to it will get the ability to Decapitate enemies. There is an, an actual walker that decaps as well and does AoE damage. So there are, there are a lot of different strategies that you can do, and it's going to be interesting to see what people come up with. I think... The walkers themselves are actually pretty weak. This is against a very weak defense team. As I showed the stats, their defenses are really low, so they're getting, gonna get one shot quite a lot. And I think, unfortunately, that the defense teams are not going to change too much in that revive meta is still gonna be a thing in this because obviously, you know, revives are just gonna be so overpowered. If a character gets revived and a walker is standing where their revived body is, it instantly will kill that that walker as well that's that's just another little bonus but that's the end of this sort of this video it's a quick test a quick run through of the gameplay from the new walker hordes game mode if you have beta you can check it out right now i'm going to be playing this on my stream most likely on thursday but like i said that's the end of my video thank you very much for tuning in and as always guys keep on surviving guys keep on surviving